Hey gang, welcome back. So now that we've kind of navigated our way through all the carboxylic acid derivatives we've talked about previously, such as esters, acid anhydrides, acid chlorides and bromides, and amides, right in that last amide video, I kind of hinted at the fact that nitrogen is kind of going to be what we're going to focus on moving forward, right? And in this series, we're going to talk about amines. Now, I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest, there's not a crazy amount of stuff here. And to be honest, some of the stuff we're going to discuss builds on what we've learned before. So as long as you can kind of do the worksheets, follow the videos, and do the extra practice you need to, amines aren't that bad. Okay, so this is just a little intro video. So all I want to talk about here are kind of like, you know, the physical properties of amines. Kind of uh, how their acid base tendencies. Um, we're going to use that word amphoteric again, that kind of what we kind of used it to, to, uh, sorry, to describe oxygen uh, for the alcohols earlier on, and just a couple things like that. Okay, so just to kind of, you know, blast from the past, review some like regular functional group notation, right? Amines can exist in a variety of ways, right? If you just have some R group, you know, just a regular, actually I'll just give you an example of, you know, an amine, right? Let's just say I, I drew a one, two, three carbon chain with an NH2 on the end and a lone pair, right? Nitrogen has two bonds to hydrogen, a bond right here, it's three bonds, and then the lone pair, right? So he's got a full octet. So right here, we would say this is a primary amine, right? To give you an example, so they can't just, they don't have to be terminal at the end of a chain, right? Amines can exist like this, right? This amine has a bond to hydrogen. That's usually how these bonds to ni nitrogen are drawn with hydrogen. They're just kind of stuck right there. So hydrogen, the lone pair, and the two bonds to carbon, right? This would be a secondary amine. If we want to take this further, we could literally do something like this, right? If I had three ethyl groups coming off this nitrogen, right, this would be a tertiary amine right because he's bonded to three carbons right so uh, one bond two bond three bond lone pair full octet and you can even go so far as and we'll see how this works right we can even do uh, a quaternary amine right if we kind of I just add an extra ethyl group on this guy right and think about it nitrogen is in the fifth column right he likes to have a five formal charge well if we look at this nitrogen right if we just split the bonds, remember, one, two, three, four, this nitrogen would have a positive charge. So this is how your amine can kind of go, right? We can go anywhere from primary, secondary, tertiary, to a quaternary ammonium salt is what you would call it, because usually you'd have something like, I don't know, Br- minus to kind of balance that out. But let's not forget, we can also, this all stems from ammonia, okay? Okay, so I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to erase this. The first thing I want to talk about is kind of uh, the fact that amines are achiral, and it's really not that hard, I promise. Okay, gang, so I'm going to draw a basic or just, just a generic amine up here, and I want to kind of just look at it from a stereochemical standpoint. So let's do this. So I'm going to draw this out like this. So if we look at this amine, right, you can see that if we're just going to see how many different things it's bonded to, right, we have an ethyl group, right, a methyl group, right, CH3 right here, a hydrogen, and the lone pair, right, if I kind of draw a loop around the lone pair, it looks like this thing is bonded to four different things. Given our stereochemistry training, right, in our minds, we're thinking, that's a stereocenter. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you were to kind of see if this compound would excuse me, uh, rotate the plane of polarized light like a chiral compound would, this amine's not going to do it. This amine is actually a chiral. And here's why. What this amine's going to do, if I, I'm going to redraw this just a little bit different, differently. I'm going to draw this amine like this. I'm going to wedge the ethyl group. I'm going to dash methyl group, right? Because we had a methyl and a methyl. I'm going to draw a lone pair up here. And I'm going to draw 
a hydrogen over here. Okay? What amines do at any given time, right, is what they're going to do is that they kind of invert themselves. And here's what I mean. What happens is that this lone pair is actually going to kind of flip and everything's going to kind of invert, just like you'd expect when we did SN2, right? There's almost like an inversion of the molecule. Ethyl group would flip up, methyl group would flip up, hydrogen flips down, and so does the lone pair. So there's almost like this, uh, this toggling back and forth. And here's the key. In the middle of the toggling, if I'm going to kind of draw this, I'm going to draw this in a different color actually. During the, uh, in this transition state, what you have, what you have is, my bad, is actually a transition state where everything, oops, I'm going to draw this a little bit better. Your mean is actually sp2 hybridized. Sorry, this is not the most graceful way to do this. But the fact is, in the middle of your lone pair going from on top to on bottom, you have this transition state right here. And during this transition state, you are sp2 hybridized. You're actually flat. So because you're toggling between this form and this form, and you go through this transition state, the means are achiral. So I've seen this question on a test a bunch of times, and you have to say, you know, someone would say, we'll give you an amine bonded to four different things, and you have to explain why is this amine achiral? Why does this amine not uh, rotate the plane of polarized light? What you have to do is kind of draw the mirror image, kind of hint at the transition state, saying that it's sp2 hybridized in during the transition state, and remember, things that are sp2 do not have stereochemistry, and then you'd have to just go, boom, it's achiral. You'd have to drop the mic and just stare at the haters. Okay, let me erase this, kind of recover from that terrible joke, and we'll move away from stereochemistry and just more towards acid-base tendencies of means as well as uh, hydrogen bonding. Okay, gang, moving away from stereochemistry, let's kind of take a look at uh, the acid-base tendencies of amines. Now, amines and anything ranging from you know NH3 to uh, primary, secondary amines, right? They can act as a base, and honestly, they're a better base than they are an acid. So if we're just going to ignore this up top down here, right? In the presence of a strong acid, or really almost any acid, this amine right here is going to have no problem picking up this H plus, right? So if I was going to draw the mechanistic errors a little bit, grab the H, electrons go to bromine, we expect this type of acid-base reaction. Amines can act as bases, and they're definitely better bases than they are acids. If we look up top, right, this amine, right, he's not so readily going to give away one of his hydrogens. He's not going to be able to just donate H+. But remember, if I have some strong base like a Grignard or LDA, some really, really, really strong base that can just rip protons off. What's going to happen is, remember, this right here to us, it means this. You know, he's going to be able to take one of these hydrogens and dump these electrons on this amine. So, he, you know, he has a lone pair to start out with. So now this nitrogen has two lone pairs, right? And we end up with this CH4 over there. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but if you're sitting at your computer and you can think, oh, remember, I remember that term that describes something that can act as an acid or a base, just like alcohols, amines are what you would call amphoteric. Okay? Now, just remember that they're amphoteric, they can act as an acid or a base, but definitely amines, especially if they're neutral, they want to, uh, they would definitely act as a base as opposed to an acid. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about hydrogen bonding, so let me erase this. We'll fin finish up with some hydrogen bonding, and we'll call it quits. Alrighty, gang. So to wrap this video up, like I said, let's talk about some hydrogen bonding. So remember, to have the, uh, the criteria to hydrogen bond, 
means that you have to have some electronegative atom, such as oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, attached directly, directly bonded to a hydrogen, right? Giving that hydrogen a very partially positive uh, charge so that hydrogen bonding can occur. So look no further than amines, right? Here, I'm giving you guys a secondary amine because I kind of want to make a point as well in a second. But let's take a look. I'm going to expand this a little bit and look what we have, right? We have a nitrogen, very electronegative, directly bonded to a hydrogen. So this hydrogen has a fat delta plus. This nitrogen definitely has a delta minus. This is the perfect recipe if you had, um, you know, a whole mixture of diethyl amine, right? Let me just draw another one to kind of show. I will draw it, draw it in brown, right? What we would have here is a nitrogen come over with its lone pair, right? And uh, you'd have this going on like that, right? Another nitrogen with its lone pair would link up with this partially positive hydrogen, right? Hydrogen bonds can be made by amines. Now, now that we've kind of said that, I want to pose a question. I think it's on one of the, I think it's on the first of the two worksheets in amines, right? So this is nice. This is good. When we know amines can hydrogen bond, it's excellent. If I gave you guys something like this, if we compared it to ethanol, right? I use this secondary amine because there's one hydrogen that can be donated as a hydrogen bond. And right here in this ethanol, this hydrogen can also be donated as a hydrogen bond, right? Because it's directly bonded to oxygen. If I had, you know, posed the question, which hydrogen bond can, uh, you know, made can be stronger in, uh, is it stronger in diethyl amine or in ethanol? And here's kind of the thought process. We know that based on periodic trends, right, nitrogen's here, oxygen's here, in the, on the periodic table in the second row, it goes nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Oxygen is more electronegative than fluorine, or sorry, woo, than nitrogen, right? So think about it. The delta plus on this hydrogen is smaller than the delta plus on this hydrogen here. So I'm going to kind of make that clear with that big fat delta plus. As a result, because oxygen is more electronegative, this bond is more polar, this delta plus is fatter than this one because nitrogen is less electronegative. Oxygen forms stronger hydrogen bonds as a result through its electronegativity than does nitrogen containing compounds. Okay, and one more point I want to make. If I erase this, if I pose the question to you guys, let's say I had this given amine. In this case, it's a tertiary amine. If I had a whole mixture of this compound, it's, almost a, it's a trick question, I would say, how, like, how many hydrogen bonds can it form? And the answer is, it can't, right? Because all you would have is just a whole mixture of amines like this, right? But there's no uh, bond from an electronegative atom directly to hydrogen, right? Because in a tertiary amine, right, you just have bonds to your alkyl pieces. So tertiary amines cannot donate a hydrogen bond, right? It can't give um, something like, you know, the amine we had drawn earlier, right? This H can be donated as a hydrogen bond. All of these tertiary amines can do is accept a hydrogen bond with that lone pair. 